So, uh, so it, it's very unusual to have such a low uh, clinical repeat revascularization rate. Yeah. Siggy, do you have? Uh, um, I mean, it's only 57 patients, but still, it's it's very low. Yeah. yeah that's, so that's saying that's saying to high. that, uh, so I was impressed with the low uh, long-term mortality, seven percent. I was impressed by the low rate of the target lesion revascularization, and I was impressed also, but preserved LV function and no negative remodeling. Uh, this was also my my comment. I mean, you could see it on both sides. First of all, it could say that uh, restenosis is really not the problem of patients with yep. acute coronary syndrome. Yep. The problem is uh, thrombus, and we all know this. Uh, you could also be provocative. Let, let me try to be provocative. Maybe those patients had already, because this was clinical restenosis, they did not get angina, so there was no reason to cath them again. You could be provocative and say, well, maybe the PCI came too late, so it was already infarcted, and this is why they did not experience uh, their angina again because it was dead. And wh what was the average, uh, the average time between uh, chest pain onset and PCI? So first, uh, going to that, that uh, it could be just, let's say, that all arteries were occluded after the stenting and we don't see any angina. So that's why I wanted to check the LV uh, function and LV diameter. So if the artery were occluded, so the LV would be, you know, deteriorated and the enlargement of the LV and the ejection fraction should go down. But for our patient, you know, the, usually we have uh, the delay like uh, four hours. Sees the chest pain onset, and all of them in Poland they go for primary PCI. So, so Darius, you see these results. You, you you have available to you pretty much all the new therapies for AMI. How have you integrated the use of MGARD into your clinical practice of taking care of STEMI patients? Uh, so I have been lecturing for that for the last two days, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I would say that in primary PCI we see the better evidence for drug eluting stent, which is clear, but for the special. Uh, lesion specific you know the treatment we need the new technology and when you have the big thrombus load nowadays I think that the M guard is very clear indication to use so I would say that primary PCI nowadays it is a stenting but for thrombus loaded lesion this stent is opportunity for many patients with primary PCI what is the incidence of stent thrombosis uh, Dr. Dudek and uh, what is uh, the nature of restenosis if you have done a check angio in any of these? Because in no. our series of about 90 uh, patients, I mean, we have not seen any strain thrombosis so far, no. especially in vein drafts and acute MIs. Yeah, so I'm confirming that and I uh, presented that uh, definite and probable strain thrombosis was zero. And we didn't have any evidence and uh, uh, even in everyday practices, I don't see any. I, I have never seen, you know, the stent thrombosis with that one. I'm trying to understand how would the stent works differently from a distal protection device. So if you think distal protection device did not work well in acute MI, how would the stent works? How would you explain that? So first of all, when you go with the distal protection device, uh, they are quite bulky and you need to go through the uh, thrombus uh, burden and you can have the distal embolization during the passing. So this is the first. Also, I have seen, you know, some cases that the uh, umbrella is prothrombotic, uh, pro uh, prothrombogenic, and I was seeing, you know, some clots even on the on the device. The third one that this procedure with the distal um, uh, protection devices is longer. You need to install. You have the more timing, and you have still the more bulky device in the artery. So I think that the simple way is to say that this procedure is just faster. Faster and simple. Uh, with, with these devices, you need a landing zone uh, far behind the lesion, and, and many patients with STEMI don't have a landing zone behind the occlusion. Yeah, I think also in, distal protection devices are relatively inefficient in actually capturing all of the embolic material. Um, and there are other things released from the lesion that, in fact, are not even solid. There, there are vasoactive substances that can induce no reflow and other things. Um, so by trapping everything so that nothing goes downstream, so you try to eliminate most of the embolic phenomenon, I think it has a much more profound effect than just having a filter. 
Can I add to this? Because you know, uh, the difference which you asked, I think uh, conceptually, distal protection is a thrombus protection device. And this is actually a thrombus exclusion device also. So it excludes the thrombus on the side of the vessel. So neither it comes inside the distal in the lumen, nor it gets into the. So so it's, uh, it's and better. I would argue that, yeah. that, 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 that when you finish, whether you use a bare metal stent or a drug eluting stent, you're still leaving a lot of thrombus behind. And you're leaving thrombus behind that's vulnerable that can fragment and microembolize over a period of time after you've removed the distal protection device by permanently excluding or displacing it, I think that may have a more significant effect. So would you think the covered stent, the regular covered stent, completely covered, would work well in a QTMI then? No, there are works on it. You have yeah. to remember that, uh, first of all, you induce much more damage and restenosis. Secondly, there is a lot of vasoversorum, and uh, we do know that you have a lot of small arteries that you occlude, and you kind of damage the arteries. And we have quite experience uh, before with all the covered stand that the vessel doesn't breathe, so to say, and you damage the vasoversorum. Plus, so in plus this you way, we, we do believe that you get and maintain a healthy way for the endothelium to heal much quicker. Plus you occlude possible side branches, and even if they're smaller side branches, they are lost forever with the covered stand. So I, I would never, some people call the MGAR the covered stand, no. but that's wrong, I would definitely And the major say, concern with covered stand was stent yeah. thrombosis, so which probably we don't see here. So this is not a covered stand. thrombosis, increased restenosis, side branch occlusion, I think it's a very different device. Side branches remain patent, it's, it's a very different device.